Digital Content Podcast, your go-to source for content creation, strategy, and business inspiration. I'm your host, Mel Daniels, content strategist, coach, and speaker, empowering women across the globe to grow their business with powerful content that connects, nurtures, and converts. So if you're ready to create standout content that gets you noticed and remembered, or build an aligned audience who love you and are ready to buy from you, you're in the right place. I believe that content has the power to connect us all. It's up to you how you use it. Listen in for genuine and insightful chats with guests, as well as practical tools and strategies from me. It's so lovely to have you here. Let's dive into the show. Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to episode 80 of the Powerful Content Podcast. I hope you're well today. Welcome back to all of my lovely regular listeners and a huge hello. If you're new to the podcast, I truly appreciate you being here. So this week's podcast is all about visibility. Do you need to take a deep breath when you say that word? I know I do sometimes. For me, visibility used to conjure up images of hard work and mainly appearing on video constantly and talking to the camera. I really felt like I had to promote myself constantly and be everywhere on all the platforms and do everything. (laughs) So the thought of visibility equaled exhaustion for me. And I know that so many people feel the same way as well, which is such a shame because the end result of all of this is that you just don't do it, right? You don't create the content. You don't do the work. You don't take up the opportunities and you continue, unfortunately, to be the world's best kept secret. But the opposite of this is trying to do too much and ending up feeling overwhelmed and burnt out. Now, one of my beautiful members of the Content Effect shared this exact same story recently. She was going through a launch and really wanted to increase awareness of her offer. So she decided to go all in with Facebook groups. So commenting and promoting every day she possibly could in as many groups as she could. And the result, well, it was total utter exhaustion. (laughs) And now she obviously dislikes Facebook groups immensely. And whilst I believe that she totally achieved what she set out to do, it was her objective to increase her visibility. And that's exactly what happened. Her visibility skyrocketed and she sold more spots than she anticipated in her programs, but it just didn't feel good. So if you're feeling like this beautiful member of mine that knows visibility is important to your business and wants more sales, but wants a more sustainable way of doing it, then this episode is for you. It actually seems kind of ironic that I'm recording this episode right now, as last night I did something that will hopefully increase my visibility. I hit publish on my pre-launch Kickstarter page for my book. Yes, I'm going to publish a book. (laughs) Take a deep breath, Mel. (laughs) If you enjoy listening to this podcast, I know that you're absolutely going to love the book as well. So I'd love to invite you to head on over to the Kickstarter page. The link is in the show notes and hit the notify me button or Simply pop over to kickstarter.com and type Mel Daniels in the search and you'll find it that way as well. So that way Kickstarter will let you know when the project goes live, which is about mid-October at this stage. So you can jump in on the limited early bird specials that I've got for the first day. Now, I'm sure this book journey is something that I'll talk about in future episodes to come. So make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss them. But for the moment, I feel a little bit out of control. (laughs) which is so not comfortable for a planner archetype like myself. You see, I actually had planned the next few months worth of content out already in preparation for launching the content effect at the end of November. Obviously, that's changed now. I had written blogs, prepared podcast episodes and socials, and now I really need to rearrange all of that and add book-related content instead. So I've got to think about collaborations and basically I need to action all of the insights that I'm going to give you today. (laughs) So maybe I'll be listening back to this podcast later. I wanted to let you know about this because it's exactly what I'll be doing over the coming days and weeks 
to increase my own visibility in so many different ways. So I'm going to give you some practical examples as we go along. First of all, what is visibility? Well, it's basically just the ability to be seen and heard by your target audience. And it's about getting your message in front of the people who matter. Now, in the online space, visibility is more important than ever before with the amount of competition for attention out there. So increasing your visibility will lead to increased brand awareness, being seen as the expert, more clients, more personal and more business growth as well. This is exactly what I hope my book will do for me. So now you know what visibility is, how can we go about increasing our visibility? Well, I've got six things that you need to do in order to increase your visibility. Now, number one is know your audience. Now, if you're not sure who you're speaking to, then obviously your content is never going to land with anyone. Well, at least not your ideal clients. And when you can not only articulate who they are, but also feel really connected to them, then that's when you're going to start getting noticed and your visibility will increase. If you're still teetering on the edge of feeling connected with your ideal client, go and check out my Unboring Ideal Client Avatar. The link is in the show notes if you need help with it. To help me really connect with my audience, whilst I was writing my book, I wrote you a love letter which I shared on episode 78 of the podcast. So go and take a listen if you're interested in how I was able to connect with you. The second way to increase your visibility is to have a message that matters. I've spoken about a message that matters on a few podcast episodes. You can go and check out episodes 65 and 74. But when you're really in love with what you want to bring to the world and the change that you want to make and the difference you want to make in people's lives, then anything can happen. A message that matters not only speaks to your ideal client, but it also feels good for you. Now, my book is the beacon of my message that moving content marketing to a more humanistic space is not only good for your business, but it's also good for you too. That ditching the schwoods along the way To take into consideration your time, energy and resources will make life flow easier and that we make a greater impact when we come together. Now, when all of this is supported by a framework that allows you to bring your strengths and your love to content marketing, then your ideas are going to flow and you'll be able to connect, nurture and convert your ideal client more easily. I really Really cannot wait to share this message with more people through my book. Now, the third way is to be consistent. And this may sound really boring, but without a doubt, it's one of the most important parts of helping people perceive you to be the go-to expert in your industry. The more opportunities they get to see and hear you, the more opportunities they have to connect with your message that matters. For me, this means I'll be on all aspects of socials more consistently over the coming weeks. I'm a little bit hit and miss with some of the features of some of the social media platforms, but it's time to dial it up and go all in. Now, the fourth way that you can increase your visibility is to simply put yourself out there. And this one, I know this one can be a little bit daunting, especially if you don't enjoy being in the spotlight. But you don't have to turn up online by yourself. There's plenty of entrepreneurs out there ready to collaborate with you. I guarantee that there's people just like you wanting to become more visible but feeling a little bit overwhelmed or not sure where to start. I know that they would love to hear from you with a suggestion to go live on socials or perhaps do a giveaway together or come up with some other collaboration. You can also offer to be a guest, whether it's in their Facebook group, their membership, to write a blog for them, be a podcast guest or a video guest. There's plenty of business owners out there that would love for you to make their content creation lives easier by helping them with their next idea for their content. For me and the book and the Kickstarter campaign, I'll be reaching out to everyone. (laughs) I mean, everyone I know to see if they're willing to host me on 
podcasts, on lives, in training sessions. And now the fifth way that you can increase your visibility is to make sure that you're using your entire content ecosystem. So make sure that you're using everything that you have at your disposal to reach as many people as possible, but in a strategic and easy way. I'm not suggesting here that you try and do hashtag all the things because part of my message is that you should not do that, but simply because that's going to lead you to overwhelm and burnout. But what I am suggesting is to use the power of reimagination to turn your one piece of content into as many different pieces as possible. I know that I'll be using the two new blogs that I need to write now for this Kickstarter launch every way I possibly can. Now, the sixth insight I'm going to give you here is don't give up. Oh my goodness, this is hard. But lastly, please persist. Improving your visibility doesn't happen overnight, despite what it looks like for others. It really is a long-term strategy and requires you to put yourself in situations that may be out of your comfort zone. So keep going, even when you feel like no one is listening. Now, I know from experience that this is going to be a really tough one for me, but I'll be using one of my favorite mindset techniques, visualizations, to support me through that really nervous funding stage of the campaigns. Okay, so those six ways, again, that you can increase your visibility are know your audience, have a message that matters, be consistent, put yourself out there, use your entire content ecosystem and don't give up. Now, along the way, I've given you some examples on how I will be doing this with my Kickstarter book launch, but here are some specific tactics that you might like to use right now in your business. The first one is be consistent. Be consistent with core content that connects or nurtures. So that's your blogs, your podcasts or videos. Do them on a really regular basis and commit to that and commit to that consistency as well. You could implement a guesting strategy and episode 34 is for you if you are looking to be a guest for other people. Use the power of PR. So you might use earned media such as news outlets or online publications. And if you want to find out more about PR, you can go back to episode 77 where I spoke to Amber Danes about powerful PR for your small business. Make sure that you're regularly emailing your subscriber list and episode 52 can help you with that, how to build your email list with the right clients without feeling salesy because no one wants that. You could do some training. So think about webinars, training sessions on your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your Facebook groups. You could do a five-day challenge as well. And then lastly, social media. Don't just think about posting consistently, but also interacting as well because it's, well, social, right? So all of these tactics are basically things that increase the chance of you being seen. I know you're thinking, Mel, that sounds like a lot of things to be doing when I've got finances to attend to and clients to serve, but hear me out. This is not about doing hashtag all the things. Sustainable visibility is finding a harmony between increasing your visibility, growing your business and taking care of yourself. And as I always say, you come first. You come first when it comes to your business and you come first when it comes to content creation. So if you're feeling like the idea of visibility is overwhelming or you're in the midst of it right now and it's impacting your health or well-being, there's a few things that I'd love you to do. The first thing is set realistic goals. Please don't try to do too much too soon. Start with small, achievable goals and gradually add to what you're doing to increase your visibility over time. Now, I've told the story so many times about how when I first started out in business, I blogged every single week, but that's because I had the time. I didn't have as many clients, but as my client load increased, then my blogging decreased. But then it got to a point where I was so consistent with it 
And I had such an amazing process in place that I was able to add this podcast as an additional piece of core content as well. But just know that this didn't happen overnight. It happened over time. The second thing I want you to do is focus on the quality over the quantity. So it's better to have a few high quality pieces of content than a lot of low quality content, which is what we will be seeing more of as more people use AI for their content creation. I want you to stay consistent, but pair it back. So could you take something out of the mix? What could you do less of? What doesn't need to be published right now? Is there a way to still consistently show your face, show your content to your beautiful audience, but be kind to yourself as well? And lastly, take a break. If it's really all too much, please step away. I'd much rather you do nothing than do something that will make you end up hating content or your business altogether, because that's not what I want for you. You know that I'm all about the practical. So I believe that sustainable visibility is more about the way that you create content. And that, my friend, as I alluded to before, is more about you than anything else. When you're trying to be like someone else or someone that you think you should be, whether consciously or unconsciously, it's hard work. Everything in your business is going to be hard work. So the first thing that I want you to do is bring more of you. Powerful content will undoubtedly increase your visibility. This is when you create content that's really mindful of the person that's consuming it, but also feels really good for you. It's about using it with purpose in a way that meets your time, energy, and resources. And this doesn't mean that you have to share every single aspect of your life. Bringing more you to your content doesn't mean that. Unless, of course, you want to, and that's what your audience wants to see. If that's the case, go for it. But for people to notice you and for you to become more visible, they need the opportunity to connect with you as a human being first. So if you're doing this in a way that accommodates your strengths, what you love to do and create in a way that honors the boundaries of your time, your energy and resources, then guess what? Visibility will be less of a chore and far more enjoyable. Now, the second thing, and I've already alluded to this, is the power of reimagination. And yes, I talk about this every single episode, so go back to episode 10. If you want to find out more about this, but it's basically your secret weapon to creating more content in less time and helping you increase your visibility at the same time. So you can avoid content and visibility burnout altogether by simply working smarter. By taking your core piece of content, that's your blog, podcast or video, you can quickly and easily break it down into lots of smaller pieces of content that you can use in your social media. So as an example, if I have a blog called five reasons you need to create more memorable content, which I do have, by the way, I can create a post promoting people to go and read it, a post on each of the five different reasons, a carousel post with the five reasons on each graphic, a short video. I could share it as a reel on Instagram, TikTok. YouTube shorts. I could do a live and talk about the five reasons or each of them separately. I can take a quote from it to promote discussion or I can create some questions around it like what do you think makes content worthy of stopping the scroll or take a guess at what the number one reason content doesn't land with your audience is and use them on Instagram or threads or in my Facebook group somewhere to start a conversation. So there's so much that you can do and so many places that you can put your content. Just remember to take your time, energy and resources that you have available into consideration because you overstretch yourself and you'll be back in that space of overwhelm and your visibility will take a dive. I'm actually really looking forward to sharing more about this topic as I head through my book funding campaign on Kickstarter. So don't forget to go over there now and click the notify me button. The link is in the show notes. I really hope that this episode has given you some practical ideas and insights on how you can go about increasing your visibility, but still stay sane. Talk soon. Thanks so much for listening. That's it for another week. 
To get more powerful content in your life, make sure you're following along on socials. My handle is at Meld Business. And just in case you're wondering, the groovy music for this podcast was created by Just Here on SoundCloud. I'd also be super grateful if you took a moment to rate and review this podcast so more amazing women like you can experience the power of content. And if you're like, hell Mel, stop talking. I'm ready to work with you now. Here's how we can work some powerful content magic together. Firstly, come and join the content effect. My membership, Inspiring Women with Service-Based Businesses to ditch the content chaos and start creating standout content that gets you noticed and makes sales. You can join us by using the link in the show notes or just Google the content effect. The second way we can work together is via my one-on-one packages. We can create a sustainable content strategy or start to build out your client journey. It's up to you. Hop on over to meldbusinessservices.com.au forward slash services to find out more. Until next time, have a beautiful week and embrace the power of your content.